been a minute since I made a video. I'm really happy to be back though, and I'm coming back at you with some new passions and things that I've really been enjoying and want to share with you guys. A week ago, I went out to California with my wife and my son to visit some of my wife's family. She's from Southern California, and we always love going to see family and really enjoy being able to get away from the harsh winter of the Midwest whenever we get the chance. What I did in California was I shot film. I shot 35 millimeter film um, primarily on this Minolta X700. And if you know anything about film photography, you've probably heard of this camera. This is a relatively popular first camera for beginners who shoot film. Why is that? That is because it has this dial right here where you can see an A and a P. The A is for aperture priority mode and the P is for program mode. Now, I probably should have looked up what program's all about before I made this video, but I never use it, and apparently that's the popular thing about this. What I love about it is the aperture priority mode. The aperture priority mode is basically you set the aperture, and in order to prioritize that aperture so you can keep it there, it is going to automatically adjust the shutter speed, and this makes it so that you can for, to some degree, um, get the aperture you'd like. Now, I made quite a mistake, and you're probably gonna notice there's one big similarity between the black and white photos and the color photos that I'm showing you, and that is that they suck. Now, they're not both from California. Actually, the black and white photos are just from like a year ago but they're from this camera, so I wanted to show you kind of what it's capable of. The ones in California in particular, they... So, here's... I, I made a mistake. I'm not going to get into it, but there's something called pushing film. And that's basically choosing a different um, ISO speed than that which is on the box of film, which is what you would traditionally use. So I was shooting Portra 400, but I shot at 1600 instead of 400. And what that does is it tends to give you a little bit of a color shift and um, more intense contrast, maybe some uh, more vivid colors. And I, I did that intentionally because I wanted to see what the results were, but I probably should have thought a little bit first before deciding to make uh, my portrait an experiment instead of just taking good photos. And so a lot of the photos from California didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. They're, there's like no detail in the shadows and um, yeah, just very crunchy photos. Now, I don't know if that's because of the film lab I sent it to. I'm gonna be trying another film lab here soon and I'm gonna share a video with you guys about that. Um, but apparently, they're a lot more credible. They use the Nuritsu film scanner or whatever it's called. I'm not sure what film scanner they use at this other one, but I think it's like a Fuji something or other. Um, so, I'm excited to see the results. Now, what did I shoot with this camera? I, the whole time in California, I used this 50 millimeter 1.4. I'll just put it up there for you guys to see. 50 millimeter 1.4. Um, and honestly, most of the time, I didn't find that to be the best focal length for what I was shooting. This is not the perfect focal length for everything. I did a lot of landscapes and um, went to a lot of these cool towns in uh, on the coast, the southern coast of California. Um, Oceanside, we went to the pier, 
and I took some photos there. I got this really cool photo of the sea foam and there's like this really nice orange light streak, something that came through on the digital photo that I got back that just looks really cool. Um, and then later on, we went to a town called San Clemente that you've probably heard of. I don't know why I said it like that, as if no one's heard of San Clemente. But besides the point, they had some really cool architecture in this coastal town that we hung out in. I went to this coffee shop called Sir Coffee, and it's probably one of the better ones that I've been to out there. Um, but honestly, so far, the Southern California coffee culture, and, and I mean Southern, I mean below, LA. Never been to LA, never intend to go there. It sounds like a dumpster fire. But it's been pretty trash. I never expected that. But that's besides the point too, okay? So I didn't just shoot this camera there. I actually shot on my Fuji. Sorry about that noise. This uh, Fujifilm Discovery camera. I'll show you real quick but I'll probably make a separate video about this one because I've shot other film on it. And I haven't gotten the film back from California that I shot on this roll, roll camera. So this is the camera that I got um, a little bit before going. It's a $10 point and shoot I got off um, Facebook Marketplace, uh, the Fuji Discovery 90. And I was actually really impressed with how sharp a lot of the photos I took on it came out. And I'll, I'll make my next video on it, but I'm excited to show you guys. I'm honestly, with the lenses I have for this X700, I'm not super impressed with it ultimately. I always feel like I should get better photos when I look through the lens on the viewfinder. It looks sharp. The depth of field looks great, but when I get them back, it's generally very underwhelming, very grainy and things like that. So I don't know if that's my settings that are wrong or if the lenses are just garbage, dirty. I don't know how to tell if there's fungus or whatever. I'm, I'm relatively new to the film photography game, but yeah. Yeah, so this Minolta is an MD. They also have other lenses that fit this mount. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but I think they're M something. And there are people who will tell you that one, so it's an older version and a newer version of lenses that had come out for this mount. And I think people prefer the older ones. I could be wrong, I, I, I don't remember. But if you're getting this camera, I'd look into that. Um, this came with these lenses, the Vivitar 28, and it actually came with a zoom lens that I've never touched. But yeah, I don't know if it is this lens because I use it on my digital camera sometimes and it just looks so good. So yeah, sorry about the rant, but in the future, so after the Fuji video, after the Fuji video that I'm gonna make, uh, I intend to make a video about a new camera that I got, which is a rangefinder from 1957 and it is made by Canon. And I haven't even used it yet, so I better get on that, but I told my wife I wouldn't buy any more film until all the rolls I've taken in the past month are developed, and that's like six rolls, so yeah. Well, if we haven't gotten there already, here's the rest of the photos that I took on that trip, and maybe some from just this camera in general.